You're listening to the Small and Supercharged Podcast with Rhea Freeman, episode 22. Well, hello and thank you for joining me on today's podcast. Now, today we're going to talk about Instagram stories, but specifically functions that you might not know that you can add to your Instagram story. Now, I'm talking about after you've decided whether you want to do text or a picture or a video, you tap the little sticker tab and in there, there's quite a few different functions that you might have seen, but you might not have used yet, or you might not really know how they apply to you. Now, I think that some of these are really, really useful, and some of them have definitely led to, for clients particularly, website conversions, people going over to buy products, we can see that because of the, st- the stats, definitely an increase in engagement. And I think some of them are really, really useful. So I wanted to just chat through them well just I'm going to just pick on five um I want to to talk about gifts as well I'm going to go six so five functions and gifts there we go um because I think that they're one of these things that when they first appear you kind of go oh that's exciting and maybe you use them a couple of times and then you don't because you just don't but actually they can be really really useful so the first thing I want to talk about is gifts that's how I say it GIFs. Um, I think some people call them GIFs, GIFs. I call them GIFs. So basically these are little moving, um, I think they're made by taking a series of images that then are put together to make essentially a, a, a moving thing. So these are quite a fun way to jazz up your Instagram stories. I'm not sure if jazz is even a word anymore that people use. Anyway, jazz. Um, up your Instagram stories. So there's loads in Instagram. If you, you can type in what you're looking for, it'll appear. So if you want happy or unicorn, yeah, because those two things are normal. Um, happy unicorn, new numbers, whatever you want to add, have a look and you might find there's just something that can help you to make your story a little bit more interesting and a bit more fun and engaging. I don't use loads of these myself. I do use a few. But I'm always very wary, especially with clients, to be on brand. So with mine, I can be a bit more relaxed. But with client stuff, if you're if you are working for people or you're representing your own company, you do need to keep in mind people's perception of your company when you decide to add a GIF or not. Because if you add some kind of crazy GIF and you're quite a straight laced traditional company, it doesn't really fit. So that would be my only word of warning with a GIF, but I love them when they're used properly. They make me smile. Um, there's a really fun one from um, Frozen. Again, my mum life thing's coming through a bit. But um, it's, oh God, what's her name? Elsa from Frozen. And she kind of wafts along the screen and sprinkles ice everywhere. And I think that when you're freezing, it's quite a fun one to do. But go and have a look. They're a really fun way to add to your Instagram story. But now I'm going to talk about five functions, I'm going to call them. I mean, on my notes, I've put the function word in inverted commas. So this is when you've done your story, you click on the sticker tab. The first thing I want to talk about is the product tag. Now, this isn't available on everybody's. You have to be set up through Facebook. So you have to have a Facebook shop. But this is really useful, especially if you're under 10,000 followers on Instagram. So you don't have the swipe up function and you're a brand. So let's say you had a picture of a beautiful um, hat, I see a hat in front of me, and because you have under 10,000 followers, people can't directly shop. So they can't swipe up and go to your website. They would have to either go out and go to the link in your bio and then find it, or some other kind of clunky method to get the product to actually be able to make that purchase. Now, if you add a product tag, And the thing is, when you go into the little, I'm going to call it the sticker option, um, if if that is enabled at this point, it will be there. It's a little white tag with, I think it's blue and green writing. Um, If not, go and have a good Google, look at how you set it up. The ones that I have been involved with always start at Facebook because obviously Facebook and Instagram are connected. Some people's websites sort of automatically populate it through, you know, through the correct means, but do a bit of research because depending on how you're all set up, um, it might be a little bit different, but I would definitely put the time into doing this if you are a brand that directly sells a product. So any kind of, well, any product really, if it's a service, not so much, I wouldn't worry too much. If it's a product, I definitely would. 
This means though that when someone sees a product that they like in your stories, if they tap on the product sticker, it'll come up with the price. And if they tap again, it'll take them to that product on your website, which is amazing. So you may not have the swipe up, but actually this is a really good way of getting those conversions in between your social and your website. And I know that when you are looking at the return on investment from marketing, often that kind of conversion is a really important thing to be tracking. But getting people from Instagram to your website previously, if you don't have the swipe up, can be quite tricky because they have to do a number of different steps. It's not easy for them to do because they have to, as I said, go out, go to the link in your bio, click on your website or go to your link tree, find the right tab. It's a lot, it's a lot to ask somebody if that's not why they were originally coming onto a platform. But just a quick tap of the product sticker um, and it's really very seamless very easy and is a really nice shopping experience so that is a really really useful um, sticker function however you want to call it and I definitely urge you to use that a bit more you can make them quite small it doesn't have to be dominating and the good thing is as well if people don't want to tap on the sticker that's fine too they can just either watch the rest of your story or tap to advance or tap to go back. It doesn't really make it, I don't think it's particularly intrusive. I think it's quite a useful function. And if I don't want to tap on it, I just don't. So I think a sticker, the product tag or the product stickers can be really useful. The next thing I want to talk about is a fairly recent addition. It is the countdown. So again, if you go into your, um, I'm going to just keep calling it stickers. There are lots in there, but the countdown, I think it was only introduced, it was before Christmas, definitely, but not a huge amount of time ago. And I really like this. I wouldn't overuse it, but if you have got something like a sale or a new product launch, it's really good to have that there because instead of saying, no, I've had it before when you say, oh, it's, you know, coming this morning or coming tonight and of course because the story is on for 24 hours if somebody catches it at the wrong time it's sort of irrelevant and giving them sort of incorrect information not deliberately but it just is but if you have the countdown sticker it's great because it automatically updates it's really really easy to use as well um, so I think for news new products sales special offers it's a really good thing to use to keep people fully informed and up to date with when something new is launching. And I think it's really clever. I really, really like the countdown function. Um, we've used it a couple of times and I really like it. And again, it's not intrusive. You don't have to make it huge. You can make it huge if you want to. If you're, you're doing something really big and you want to really draw attention to it, you can make it the whole story if you want. You can just put a colour background on, make it the main focus but it's completely up to you, make it work for you. Now the next is the poll function. This has been around a while and I really like it. I use it a lot. It's really good, I think, for engagement. So if it doesn't have to be anything groundbreaking either. It's just a really nice way to get a good handle on what your customer's thinking, their opinions on things, how they feel about certain things. And it can be some, it can be a really good source of fun as well. So some examples of how you could use the poll function. You could do which colour somebody prefers. So let's say you have a top, you could ask them whether they prefer the pink or the blue or whatever. You could just do an image with them next to each other and just ask people to vote. The great thing is with the poll feature is that you can um, change the words yes and no, which I don't think everybody realizes there is obviously a character limit but you can change the words so you can change them to you know pink blue anything you want really as long as it fits in the space so that's a really useful function so you can do it with something like that you can just do a simple yes no so are you excited about an event or a new product launch um you can ask people's opinions on things it's a really nice way to get feedback from people and to help them feel involved and you can also share the poll results as well if you like which i think is a nice thing to do if that's you know if you're asking them a question especially about a product it's quite fun to say oh you know pink's done well today or it, it's nice content it's easy content it is content that feeds back and i think it shows that you really do care about what they've said and you're also valuing their opinion because you're sharing it 
So I would look into the poll function a bit more. Again, with all of these things, don't use them on every single story because people will lose the will. But so you know, don't ask people to answer a question or enter a poll each time because I think that just gets a little bit boring. But if used well and sort of sprinkled throughout your content, it can be a really nice way to get that engagement and get people interested. And this can work whatever kind of account you've got, whether you're an influencer, a blogger, a vlogger, you use it for fun. Maybe can, people can help you decide what colour boots to buy or what pattern of shirt they prefer or even what look they prefer if you're going out somewhere. So it can be really fun and really interactive. Now, I just touched on another thing, which was questions. Now, this is another sticker you can put on and you can type your question in. Mine's currently set to ask me a question, I think, but you can change that to anything you want and then people can type underneath. So these are good for lots of different things. Um, I kind of think that the ask me a question one can be a bit too open in some ways because you're not giving people that much guidance unless in your story, if you're doing a, a video story, you're talking them through different options. Um, I think that it's quite good if it's more specific. I think it gives people a chance to, to answer. So I have got the ask me a question one on today, which I appreciate is kind of anti what I've just said, but I've done that because I did a story talking about my ask me anything on the Monday. And I usually get questions in from that through this morning supercharge group. But obviously if someone tunes in, I'm happy to answer their questions because I do the live on my Facebook page. So it's open to the public. So I specifically did the ask me a question one because I wanted people to ask me a question for ask me anything Monday. But you can obviously just change that to whatever you want. Um, it can be something specific. It could be, you know, what events would you like to see us at? If you are a brand that has got a trade stand, it could be what's a winter must have. It could be what's your favorite brand if you're a retailer or something like that. It can be specific to your brand as well. So it could be what's your favorite Oh, Lordy, what's your favorite, come on brain, belt? Um, it can be really specific like that, or it can be much broader. Um, but I think, have a look at them, think about how to utilize them. It might be quite good as well for content ideas if you are struggling with what to write for your blog or anything like that. It could be a really nice way of generating some content ideas that people actually want to listen to, which at the end of the day is what we all want, really. We don't want to be writing blogs that nobody cares about or creating content no one cares about or sharing things that nobody cares about. So it can be a really good way to check in on that and to get some new ideas to push forward with that. And last but not least for this one is not actually in the sticker one, it's in the link one. So if you nip up to the, so you've done your story, and then next to the sticker one, there's a little link and that allows you to link to something, sometimes external, sometimes not. So if you have the swipe up function, which is if you have over 10,000 followers, you can link to a web page there. So we talked about you put a picture of a product on or you do a story or you talk about something and you can add a little swipe up GIF, 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 it's definitely GIF. Um, and also this little arrow pops up and you can literally swipe up and it'll take you to that place. And that is where you put the swipe up link where that is a little link sign. However, if you have less than 10,000 followers and you have IGTV and you upload to IGTV, you can link from your stories to IGTV through that link. And actually on IGTV in the description, you can put a or well, you could put a link to a page to give people a place to go. So that is quite a useful function. Obviously, if you have the swipe up, it's a really, really useful function. But if you're trying to promote your IGTV, it can be a nice way to do it from your Instagram stories so people know about it because the IGTV tends to show up in a different... Well, mine is where my highlights are. It's underneath my picture. I've seen a lot of people's, but obviously you have the separate IGTV app as well where you can find the content. If you're trying to promote your IGTV to your current following, that's a really nice way to put, to put the link in really because you do want people to find you. Otherwise, what was the point of that? So they are, there are five, well, there are more than five really good little stickers or functions inside the Instagram app itself. But 
they're five that I think are probably quite underused and you may not have thought about the scope that you can use them on or in for. Um, I think you don't want to overuse them as I've said before but used well I think they can be really valuable, really help engagement and really help people to get to know you better and to get excited about the things that you are excited about which is what we all want, isn't it? So I would love to know if you have used any of these, if you continue to use any of these, if you're gonna give them a go because of this, what success you've had with them, if it hasn't been so successful, I'd love to know. Obviously, I promote the podcast on my Instagram. Um, there'll be a picture on the Wednesday morning usually, and I also pull at least one quote out of the podcast and put that on but I also promote it on Facebook and um, Twitter. So anywhere you want to find me, I'm at Rhea Freeman PR on Instagram and I'm forward slash Rhea Freeman PR on Facebook and I'm at Rhea Freeman on Twitter. I'd love to know which ones you've used, how it's gone. Um, I think that'd be really interesting. And I hope you've learned something, obviously, but I hope maybe you've thought about some of these functions in a different way and how the, you can use them for your business too or your general following too. Thank you so, so much for listening and we'll catch up very, very soon. Have a great week.